We showed you a, a showdown between Rachel Maddow and Pat Buchanan a little earlier, right? And they were arguing over Sotomayor and whether she was qualified, and then it got into whether white people built this country. And, and I remember shouting out in the middle of the uh, segment as we were showing it on air when Buchanan said several things, including almost all white people died at Gettysburg and during the Civil War battles and during the Normandy invasion, I yelled out in the middle of the clip, that's not true. And of course I know that's not true. And Rachel decided, you know what? Uh, a lot of things Buchanan said in that clip are not true. And normally we don't, if there's a crazy right winger, we show you that clip, right? And if there's a politician saying something crazy, we'll show you that clip. We don't show you a lot of other progressives saying logical things, because that's what we do, right? But here, Rachel just nailed Buchanan to the wall. And it was really nicely done. So that's why we wanted to share it with you. In the beginning, she talked about the whole reason for affirmative action uh, existing in the first place. But I've covered that on the show many times. So now let's get to the part where she points out all Buchanan's lies, misstatements, however you want to color it. Here you go. Pat sees it differently. He describes affirmative action as overt discrimination against white males, full stop. And I don't want to speak for him. Pat has been making these arguments for a long time, and he says what he means, and he means what he says. They are victims of this evil affirmative action policy, which says, in effect, that everybody's covered by the 14th Amendment and the civil rights laws. Unless you're a white male and your parents and ancestors came from Europe, then we can discriminate against you. That was the argument that Pat made. It, it's, it's not cool to talk about guests after their segment is over. It's also not fair to relitigate these arguments in the absence of one of the parties who participated in the argument. And I will not try to do that now. But what I do feel obliged to do is to correct some of the things that were said in the course of my argument with Pat that were stated as fact that were not true. I feel an obligation just to correct the factual record as we would with anything else that was stated as fact on this show that was not true. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, first, in trying to make the case that Judge Sotomayor was unqualified for the Supreme Court, Pat said this, quote, she's never written anything that I've read in terms of a law review article or major book or something like that on the law. While it may very well be true that Pat has not read Judge Sotomayor's law review articles, he should not have implied that she hasn't written them. Our staff has tracked five of the judge's law review articles, the earliest written in 1979, the most recent in 2004. Pat also stated about Judge Sotomayor, quote, how did she get on Yale Law Review? Affirmative action. We contacted Yale and the Yale Law Journal. A spokesperson told us that the students themselves choose who's on the Law Journal. And when asked about Pat's affirmative action claim specifically, a spokesperson told us, quote, that is a statement of opinion by Mr. Buchanan. But here's the statement from my discussion with Pat that does require the most emphatic correction. White men were 100% of the people that wrote the Constitution, 100% of the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, 100% of the people who died at Gettysburg and Vicksburg, probably close to 100% of the people who died at Normandy. This has been a country built basically by white folks. Pat joined us for this discussion from a studio in Washington, D.C. that is not far from the White House, which was, of course, built by slaves who were not white folks. The U.S. Capitol, the physical building, was built by slaves. The city of Washington, D.C., where Pat has spent his entire life, was physically built in part by slave labor. It's not even possible to imagine how America could have competed for a place in the global economy in the 1800s, say, without plantation cotton and tobacco and sugar and rice and the other industries that were so thoroughly dependent on slave labor. This has been a country built basically by white folks that statement is only true if you don't consider anyone other than white folks to be folks. Even if you only consider slave labor, e even if, for example, you, you reimagine the railroads somehow magically building themselves without Chinese laborers, the idea that only white people built America is a fantasy, and it should not have been maintained on this show as fact. As for who has died for this country in combat, more than 200,000 black Americans fought for the Union in the Civil War. Thousands even fought for the Confederacy. 
1.2 million African Americans served in World War II, and yes, they were among those who stormed the beaches in Normandy. The Defense Department says almost 10,000 Mexican Americans fought for the Union during the Civil War. Hundreds of thousands of Hispanics served in the armed forces during World War II. Twelve Hispanics were awarded the Medal of Honor. Twenty-four Asian Americans received the Medal of Honor for heroism in World War II. This has been a country built basically by white folks. That's just not true. I love white folks. I'm white folks. Yay, white folks. It's just not factually true to, to generalize from white experience to explain how America came to be. Also, a clarification. Pat said over and over again in our discussion that he is against affirmative action. Rick Perlstein, who wrote the book Nixonland, turned up a memo from 1971 in which Pat actually suggested an affirmative action program to Richard Nixon's White House. It was an affirmative action program for Catholics. Quote, instead of sending the orders out to all our agencies, hire blacks and women, the order should go out, hire ethnic Catholics, preferable women, for visible posts. One example, Italian Americans, unlike blacks, have never had a Supreme Court member. Give those fellows the Jewish seat or the black seat on the court when it becomes available. In other words, choose a Supreme Court nominee in part on the basis of ethnicity and religion, said Pat to Nixon. So those are our corrections and clarifications. Oh, actually one other. Pat also said, quote, the U.S. track team in the Olympics, they're all black folks. Um, the U.S. Olympic track team is not all black folks or otherwise. Also, the Olympic hockey team is not all from Minnesota either, which he also said. We very much regret these errors ending up on the show, and we will be right back. I love the way she said, we regret these errors winding up on the show. That's great. And my favorite part of it, and maybe the reason why we played the whole thing for you, is that she went back and found the Catholic thing, where he's like, well... If you're going to put a Catholic on, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, affirmative action. What are you giving it to the Jew seat or the black seat for? What are you giving it to the Catholics? Now, the great irony is Sonia Sotomayor is Catholic. But apparently that didn't convince Pat Buchanan that we should give it to her anyway. Because there's a little issue of her also being a female and a Latina. Mm. Pat, that's got to hurt, man. It's got to sting. And I wonder if he watches that and thinks... Damn, I am wrong about everything. <laughs> but of course not. In his mind, he's going to have justification after justification for it. And he's going to think, mm, yeah, those facts are inconvenient. I will go ahead and ignore them. 